everybody, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a remake of my original video. So you think you want to move to New York in 2021 and now we're updating that info to 2022. And I feel like, you know, this was requested in some of the comments from that other video being like, is this information still relevant? You talked about COVID in that video. Is it the same situation there? Just in general, do you recommend moving there? So I feel like this is warranted. And it's also full circle because that's the first video that really started to take off on my channel. So it's just, it's a warm and fuzzy feeling that I'm sort of doing it again. And also a warm and fuzzy feeling that we made it through 2021. <laughs> I'm not going to be trying to dissuade you from moving here. That's never my point. My goal is that I just give you as much information as you need to make your informed decision. But these are my opinions based on my own personal experience, which if you want to know more about my personal experience, there's like a hundred videos for you to choose from. And I'm also curious to know how many of you who found my channel from that original video, how many of you are actually here? Um, I mean, I know a handful of you are because you reached out to me in my Instagram DMs, but also if those of you who have been here since my last video at the end of last year, what are your own tips? What are your own opinions? Please share in the comments, help people out. So we'll jump right in with the COVID situation. At this point, we all know that COVID's really not going anywhere, especially in a city with such a high population and it's so concentrated and there's really not enough space for people to actually have the space they need to not contract COVID. Move here knowing that your risk is increased by like a thousand percent and it's not really of if I get COVID it's more of a when I get COVID situation especially with this new variant which I think will impact 2022 a bit. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a scientist. Oh my god disclaimer I'm not a scientist. <laughs> Again these are just my opinions from my own personal experience. Right now as I'm making this video we're experiencing a wave of the new variant Omicron that's affecting the city unlike Delta was and it's almost similarly affecting it as like the first variant of COVID where things were being shut down, where it was so easy to spread, you know, back when people weren't vaccinated and people were being hospitalized more. And I feel like now we have a lot more resources to be able to test more, uh, to be vaccinated and doing the best you can to keep other people safe. Like if you're experiencing symptoms, stay home, all that jazz. COVID testing in New York is actually really tricky right now because there's a high demand for being COVID tested during this Omicron wave. And there's just not the staff uh, at the labs to be able to support this high volume of tests. More and more people are leaning towards at-home testing versus, you know, lab testing just for the peace of mind. But it's tricky because it is a rapid test and, you know, it's a smaller window of when it can detect COVID versus a PCR. And in order to get a PCR, you have to go somewhere to get that done. And if you don't have insurance, it can be really expensive. That's a massive flaw in the United States if you don't want to wait. Rapid PCR test is $250 out of pocket it's insane but I don't feel like this wave of COVID has stopped people from wanting to move here as we are now kind of giving into this lifestyle of COVID's not going anywhere so how are we going to make this our new normal and I feel like that was an idea that was really depressing at the beginning of the pandemic because we were just so used to being around people but I know that it's definitely changed my own way of living I'm definitely now more of a homebody and I like it um, and I've used that money that I would have spent normally going out into my rent and my living space. I mean, come on, I just painted my walls. The money was always there, but I was choosing to spend my money and budget going out, which I still like to do and I still can do, but it definitely became more important for me to have my own space how I want it. Like some people just don't want to have their own space. They don't want to live alone and that's totally fine. And to be honest, it's a, it's a privilege, but it's definitely something that I've had to work for and now that I have it I'm really appreciative of it <laughs> I'll never take it for granted believe me and I don't consider spending more money on your living situation like a splurge I think it's an investment but the caveat is if you do spend more money to invest in your rent and your living space then you have to actually change your habit and not go out as much otherwise you're way over budget so this is only advice <laughs> I'm giving to those of you with good self-control with your budget, but it's made a massive difference for me as I'm learning to live with COVID 
in this concentrated area of the world that if I do need to quarantine, I have a I have the place to do it. So in terms of safety, I definitely feel like it's gotten worse. I don't feel as safe as I did on the subway. Not that I really ever felt safe on the subway. Whether I feel safe or not, there's not really a choice. Like I need to use the subway to get to work. I can't afford Lyfts or Ubers. As much as I feel that safety on subways is a much larger conversation to be had about the homeless issue in New York, I don't consider it. A, it's not a personal choice of anyone who has to sleep on the subway. And I think we need to look at that with way more compassion. But there you know, are people on there that do make me feel unsafe. And it's just better to come at it from a place of compassion, but also being on high alert, I would say. It sucks that we have to, you know, worry about protecting ourselves versus, you know, solving the major issue. But this is how it is. So I definitely recommend finding someone who can sell you pepper spray. <laughs> I definitely recommend not walking at night with your headphones in. Really standard advice. Do you hear those sirens? I think there's a fire happening. Not in my building. These fire trucks always try to go down my street, but there's so many double parkers they can never get by and then you just hear like a <gasps> We'll pause. <laughs> Sirens stopped. I guess we were talking about safety, but just be smart. My tips from my last video have not changed. And sometimes you could do all the right things and then you get mugged or robbed. And that's not a New York specific thing. That is Chicago, Miami, LA. Every city you go to, there's a heightened risk. And my poor grandmother, she has a lot of anxiety about the safety, but to be honest, I feel safer in New York City with this heightened crime rate through COVID than I ever did living on a farm growing up. I didn't really live on a farm farm, but my grandparents did. And you know, if someone comes out of nowhere, robs your house and tries to hurt you and you scream, no one will hear you. If that happened to me, you know, here, God forbid, knock on wood, my neighbors would hear me and we could call the police. <laughs> So in terms of finding a job, my stance on this has changed. In my original video, I spoke to the fact that you do not need a job to be able to move here. Don't be afraid to come here if you don't have a job lined up. I do believe you need a job to move here. And some jobs you cannot get before you live here and it's very difficult. But because of COVID, virtual interviews are more common than ever. To get the job that I have, I did not interview in person at all. I didn't see the office at all. And that does suck, like I would prefer to meet people in person, but it was definitely more convenient to be at home. And because the expectation has changed, it's never been easier to get a job in New York City before you get here. And if you don't have a job before you move here, there's obvious advice to make sure you have a really solid savings because <laughs> it's not getting any cheaper. Hey, editing Chelsea here. I forgot to actually mention why I'm recommending not moving here now until you have a financial cushion or a job already lined up. It's because the jobs that I was suggesting that you can get that New York has an abundance of um, without any experience. So you can get them within a couple days if you're hustling enough to find a job right when you get here. Those ones are the ones that are the most affected by COVID right now. For example, waiting tables, the restrictions change every five seconds. Well, it's not the restrictions that are changing. It's just each restaurant is handling COVID differently. And because Omicron is so contagious, some restaurants are choosing to close, meaning that you may be out of a job. And it's a lot of service industry jobs, like uh, any food delivery, bartending, waiting tables. If you're looking in for finer dining restaurants, maybe a little bit more difficult and they do require more experience. The risk is really high for getting COVID. So again, those jobs are still available, but you have to be flexible and know that maybe this job might not last forever. That is why I recommend coming to New York with a bit more planning involved than just moving here on a whim. But the interesting thing is, the job market has changed and we're in the middle of what they're calling the great resignation. It's the employees market right now. If you are not happy in your job, if you want to change careers, now is a great time to do it. And expectations really are changing. And I really do think that if you don't have experience and you want to try in a new industry, personality goes a long way. You can't teach someone how to be good to work with. You can't teach someone to be flexible. You can't teach good attitude. That's all their parents' job, you know, and your own self-work. <laughs> and sometimes you need to work a really crappy job to be able to evaluate what you are worth. Now is the best time to negotiate your salary, even if you're entry level. Wealthy people have always had the money to pay their employees more. 
and now people are demanding that. You know what you have to offer and you could easily sell yourself to another company, sell yourself. <laughs> and you could easily, well, sell your skill set to another company with more money, less hours, etc. Somewhere where you're really happy. And the work-life balance is something that, new, it's new to New Yorkers, I guess, but it's definitely catching on. Some people really like enjoy the hustle and the grind and are really good at it, but for too many years, it's so easy to get burnt up. So if you're wanting to move to New York City in 2022, I think continue to expect a lot of up and downs, a lot of changing of the restrictions, but also being a part of a really cool shift in this city's mentality about work, about connecting with people. Something I've been realizing is that I do enjoy romanticizing the city in my own head more than I do living in it sometimes. But again, I don't think I'll ever dissuade you from moving here, but I think it's more than more than more helpful than not to give tough love because you're going to find a lot of positives. You're going to there's so many opportunities to meet new people and find new community. And I think you see enough of the positives of living here anyways that you don't really need to hear those. But just you know, keep your head screwed on, right? You know, <laughs> I hope this was helpful. I hope this answered your questions. And again, if you have any tips of your own, please leave them in the comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and ring the little bell so you'll be notified when I post. And happy new year. I will see you in my next video.